Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Last week, the NFL, the National Football League, announced that moving forward, it will not use race norming in brain injury settlements. The practice assumes that black players have lower cognitive function, making it harder for black retirees to display sufficient cognizant, cognitive deficit to qualify for a payout. In a civil rights lawsuit filed last year, two former NFL players claimed that they were denied settlement awards, but would have actually qualified had they been white. And last month, a group of NFL families dropped 50,000 petitions at a Philadelphia courthouse asking for a new inquiry. In light of these recent developments, the NFL announced that it will permanently end race norming. To discuss this, I'm joined by Dorothy Roberts. She's a professor of Africana Studies, Law, and Sociology at the University of Pennsylvania. And I am also joined by Dave Zirin. He's a sports editor at The Nation. Uh, Dave, I'm going to start with you. What is race norming and how has it been used in the NFL? Yeah, let's start with the second one. I mean, you explained it well. Race norming has been used in the NFL to deny retirement benefits to players who are suffering from things like early onset dementia, early onset Alzheimer's. They're going to the league for part of what was a $1 billion settlement implemented in 2013 and are being told that they do not qualify for the settlement because the aptitude tests that they take are being rounded up when they say, no, actually we're suffering very much from cognitive difficulties. They're basically saying, well, no, you're suffering from these difficulties, not because of the of the what you went through on the football field. You, you're actually going through this because you are black. So this is racism writ absolutely large. The National Football League has been part of this since the 2013 settlement. And the only reason they're now pledging to stop it, which frankly is like Jesse James saying he's going to pledge to stop train robberies. The only reason they are saying this is because of emails that were leaked to ABC News by doctors who were administering these tests and saying, this feels kind of racist. We're not comfortable doing this. And the judge in the case was so appalled by what she was seeing that she immediately appointed a mediator to get rid of it. And now the NFL is trying to get in front of this. But as we'll discuss, the NFL's own history of institutionalized and systemic racism means that we should look at their, their pleas that they're going to do right by this with a real askance eye. Dave, I, I, this is so baldly, nakedly racist that it's hard for me to wrap my mind around. I thought I misunderstood the article when I first read it. And, and, and like you said, this is part of an NFL scorecard that's pretty darn racist. I mean, so far, there's only one black team president. There's no black majority team owners. Three black coaches out of 32 teams. The Rooney Rule uh, that helps recruit black coaches hasn't proved to do anything. And we all know what happened with Colin Kaepernick. Uh, Dave, I know you have a book coming out very soon about this. We're talking about a league that continues to favor a Tim Tebow over a Colin Kaepernick. And then... Uh, open games with lift every voice and sing. Now, I don't need the song. I need practices to be different. It, is it me or is, is, is the NFL an outlier even among racist leagues? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, when you, there's with racism and professional sports, it's there in every league. But the NFL is a specific kind of tr institutionally Trump supporting racism. You know, when I heard this story, I immediately thought of interviews I'd done with former NFL players Michael Bennett and his brother Martellus. And one thing Michael Bennett always said to me is he said, it's a myth that the league is integrated. This is a segregated league. It is segregated between those who sacrifice their bodies on the field and those who benefit from that, from the stands and from the owner's box. So it is not integrated, it is segregated. And then Martellus would say that the words NFL, you know, a lot of players say it stands for not for long because the average career is only three years. He said that among some players, they say it stands for N-word for lease because of the way that players are mm. disrespected through the process of just playing in the league itself. Dorothy, you have so many areas of expertise here. I'm going, to, I'm going to lean on a few of them right now. I guess the first question is, is it even legal to make this kind of a, a, of a move, to be, for the league to be able to essentially say that black players have lower competence and so we're going to engage them on a different scale than white players? I mean, is, is that something that's legal? Well, it does sound like a classic case of discrimination. You have a group that is being denied benefits or getting lower benefits simply because of its race. And that is very classic discri racial discrimination. I think the problem is that 
even though we're outraged by it, this is actually a very common practice in medicine. It's the standard for good practice, supposedly in medicine. And so one of the barriers is that when you get to a court, they might say, well, the doctors or the league that was using doctors is just following standard medical procedure. And so I think we need to get to the bottom of the way in which race is used in medicine more broadly in order to correct this. But uh, I do believe well, let's, let's it is a form of racial discrimination, sure. So- Well, let, let's go there because I mean, you, 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 you just raised an interesting yeah. point. Yeah, race. There's a, there's a way here. I, I, I'm sorry, I had a, I had a little delay there. I apologize. I had a little time delay there. Oh, what sure. I was saying was, um, there, there, there's a history of, of 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 this practice you're saying that extends beyond the NFL or even beyond sports. It's medicine. It's education. It's all these areas. Can you talk a little bit about what this means and where where it comes from? Sure, absolutely. Well, we can talk about medicine broadly and the way in which biological concepts of race, the idea that race is a biological division between human beings uh, and that their bodies operate differently. So you should treat black people differently from white people differently from native people differently from Asian people based solely on their race. That's a foundation of medicine in the United States, which we can trace all the way back to slavery. So during the slavery era, there was the idea that black people were only healthy when enslaved because they had lower lung capacity than white people. So had to be forced to work in order to be healthy. And that idea has continued in medicine for over a century. And so today, there are numerous ways in which race is automatically and categorically taken into account in order to make a diagnosis. So in the case of the NFL, it's the idea that Black people's brains are different from other people's brains. So in order to determine whether they were injured or how much they were injured, you have to norm it according to what's the standard for black people. And this is very common in medicine to do what's called race correction, where there's a measurement and of some important function like kidneys or lungs or hearts uh, or uh, the uterus, or I could go bones. I could go on and on with all these different ways that the body functions. And in medicine, it's common to adjust a measurement for race on the grounds that black people's bodies naturally operate differently than other human beings. If I can give you a very common example that's used in most hospitals in the United States today, if you get a blood test and it's testing for kidney function, something called glomerular filtration rate, look at your the, the lab result. It automatically adjusts for black patients. So it'll say African-American patients, non-African-American patients, and there's a different mm. number. And so for black patients, it's adjusted upward to a healthier number. And so this has, just like in the NFL concussion settlement, a negative impact on black people because in the case of this kidney function test, you're less likely to be uh, guided towards specialized kidney care. And you're also more likely to be disqualified from getting on a kidney transplant waiting list because the measurement has been adjusted to a healthier number for black people. Even the spirometer, the, the instrument that tests for lung function, this, this here is directly coming out of the slavery era. There are still some spirometers that allow the clinician to put in race so that it's adjusted for the assumed lower lung capacity of black people. And so what's wow. healthy for black people would be unhealthy for a white person for a white with person. the exact same See, the, and, that, and that's the thing that I find so frustrating. <laughs> 
That's what I find so frustrating about yes. this. Like, every time they adjust for race, it's never in a way that benefits black people. It's always in a way to deny us access, to deny resources, to not give us a payout, to not give us proper health care. It's, it's always in a negative way. Uh, Dave, I want to give you the last word on this. I only got about 20 seconds. Do you, now that the league has been outed, do you expect any fundamental change? Um, no, I mean, I, I'm hoping that just the exposure of this and the outrage and the horror, I mean, this is pornography for fitness and, and people will look at this and that the outrage itself will spread into the medical community and the fact that the NFL has this mammoth cultural platform and the fact that people like yourself are covering this will actually open eyes to this practice. That's the only hope I see. I don't see the NFL doing something institutionally without being pushed. As always, Dorothy, Dave, thank you so much for your, your participation in this conversation. You really helped us understand what's going on here.